going on, everybody? I know this is kind of a last minute post on the FT86 Club, but wanted to uh, do a quick walkthrough for you on the 22BRZ that I just took home. So from what I understand, it's the first one in the entire country uh, that's gone home to a customer. So purchased it up here in the Pacific Northwest. Lots of fun. I know people have had a lot of questions on it, but figured I'd just give you a quick rock, walk around on this thing. Sorry, it's uh, getting pretty dark out. My wife's gonna be coming home soon, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time doing this. You know what? I'm gonna open up the garage so you guys can actually see it and we'll fire this thing up. One second here. Just need to make sure that uh, I leave room for her to pull in when she gets home so I don't get divorced. That would suck. Feel free, I'm using my tablet. Uh, should be able to see questions if you guys have them coming in. But we'll do a quick walk around. I know I've got it kind of parked uh, outside of the middle of the garage here, so I'm not gonna be able to see a ton from the passenger side. But, just got it home. Oh, focus, come on. Not gonna focus over there. Old tablet is crappy. Let me get it back here, see if it'll actually focus. There we go. Cool. So, uh, initial thoughts. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it's awesome. Obviously not beating up on it too hard yet. Um, I'm going to try and give it some proper break in miles before, uh, before we completely, uh, hammer on it. Do plan on trying to get some, uh, suspension work done to it this weekend. Have some motion control coilovers ready to go on it. Uh, a carceps front bar that I'm crossing my fingers actually fits. And uh, some 17 by 9 plus 45 Anki RPF ones with 255 wide Yokohamas ready to go on it. So if we get all that on and I can actually get it over and get it aligned at uh, PRE here in Portland on uh, Wednesday with my appointment, then uh, we'll try and take it down to Crow's Landing in California for its first ever autocross and just hope that, you know, the 700 miles down there is enough to properly break it in. So we'll go from there. Uh, not sure that's actually going to happen because we're looking at adopting a puppy next weekend and got to fly it in from Ohio. But anyways, chime in if you guys have questions. Uh, initial driving impressions so far. Uh, it's awesome. I do like it. The uh, tires kind of loud. It's, it's a uh, limited trim BRZ. So it's on the Pilot Sport 4s, um, definitely louder than what the premises were on the first generation. I don't care. It's a sports car. Um, you know, road noise doesn't bother me. It's only going to get louder when I put the yokes on it. So not a big deal there for me. Um, I know I've had a few questions come in already. I'll try and answer everything. Um, option packages. I mean, there's not really any option packages you can get on the BRZs. Accessories wise, um, I got the... Home link mirror, uh, the auto dimming rear view mirror up there. Um, I got the rear bumper applique to protect it a little bit from scratches when I'm uh, throwing stuff in and out of the bumper. Uh, let's see what else? I got the stupid LED dome lights because I'm cheesy like that. And then also got the short throw shifter. Uh, so I know people have been asking about the short throw. We'll talk about that here in a few. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how to. to answer if it's any better than a stock one because I've barely driven a stock one a couple months ago so it's can't really compare back to back on those um, but I'll try it when I can get in another like a premium model or whatever or one that doesn't have the short shifter installed see if we can take some measurements and let you know if it's actually um, any better uh, but the actual short shifter in this one super super crisp uh, the opening for the front tow hook opens yeah Timur let's see Sorry, this is, uh, I've got the car backed in, or, or pulled in here. Let's see, I haven't even looked at this yet. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's right here. So, uh, gonna look a lot like the first gen, I think, where uh, it's gonna pull out right here. Let me see, I don't have a whole lot of light in. And it actually looks, um, oh, you can't see that, hold on. Oh, is that, that's not, that can't be it, is it? That's tiny. Uh, let me get back to you on it, man. <laughs> so, uh, here's my, my perturbing part of the front plate. So, uh, when I posted pictures of it the other day, hey, Yosh, uh, you know, I posted with the, the front dealer, uh, 
thing on it and I was like, ah, crap, it's no big deal because it's already pre-drilled. I didn't realize. So the stupid thing actually did get drilled. I'm so bummed about that, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I can't be mad at them. It was my fault for asking, not remembering to ask them to uh, not put it on and they all do it. So lesson learned on my end. Oh, hold on. You know what? Let's see this thing. I'm trying to look. Does this entire damn thing come out? There's a split there. Oh man, that would be a bummer if that whole thing comes out. Let's uh, let's mess with it later. I'll see if I can get something on over the weekend because there's a split down here too. Man, that's gonna be one. <laughs> I do think this entire thing comes out, but I'm afraid to pull on it too much right now. <laughs> so, Dad, yeah, that's the uh, that's the other hot topic right now. Hold on, let me get off my ass out of the uh, the middle of here. Yeah, Timur, I'll, I'll check in the owner's manual. I just don't want to like start pulling on stuff while I've got my tablet in my hand. Uh, Dad, engine sound. I know I'm kind of one of the more vocal ones about this on the uh, the form. I don't think it sounds all that bad. Uh, the first time I drove one two months ago or so, uh, when I hopped in, I was like, man, this thing actually sounds pretty good. Uh, they've got to have a pretty good exhaust on this. And then I instantly remember that it's got the uh, engine speaker in it. So I don't think it sounds bad, uh, considering my gut impression was it sounded good. And, you know, from there, I know some people are going to try and turn it off. Uh, when I was driving at home today, I was kind of jamming out some music, trying to test the stereo more than anything. And I didn't really notice the uh, the speaker system at all. Um, that having been said, I also didn't romp on it. And I know the speaker system gets a little bit louder the more up in the rev range you go. Uh, and I'm keeping them under 4,000 RPM right now just to, you know, get some break-in miles on it. So, uh, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to answer. I know people are very opinionated on that. I'm less opinionated thinking that it's uh, it's not as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. Uh, left instrument. Yeah, we can do that. Let's hop in. Hold on. We'll fire it up. Sorry, my garage has a ton of shit in it too, so. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Shut the door so we can actually hear. So here's, um, I'm gonna pull it back a little bit and see if it'll focus at all. If I tap the screen, will you focus? No, of course not. Maybe if I go a little bit further forward, whatever. Okay, so uh, this is just when you uh, hop in the car. Uh, I don't, Timur, I don't think I can zoom in. Let me see. Yeah, it's not letting me. Sorry, man, this is gonna be the best we can do right now, but I'll answer your questions too. Um, maybe we can try it in the light sometime. So let me get over here, uh, pages. So this is kind of the info page. You can't really see it on top because it's, it's uh, but that's battery on top, uh, left side over here. So that's battery and oil temperatures down there. The green that you see down in the corner is the hill start assist. Um, and if I go down on this, that's uh, average fuel economy. Uh, here's like your trip average fuel, and then here's tire pressures for you. So you gotta get rolling for a couple of minutes before that comes on. Um, I lied to you on Facebook, I think, assuming that was you. Um, it's actually one page because you can go up and down and hit each other. So they are, you can't see them both at the same time. You can't change anything over on this side. Ooh, that actually comes in a little better. Um, but yeah, I think just grabbing this pad and pressing down, I mean, you can see I'm just up and down like that and it changes right there. So that's uh, that's easy enough. You know, I think it's gonna be good for keeping an eye on your your tire temperatures and everything. Uh, I haven't messed around yet. Somewhere over here in the glove box is a button. I think that you can um, register a second set of uh, tire pressure sensors. I have uh, on my box, oh shit, over there in the corner, uh, or, or shelf, oh shit, I've got tire pressure sensors ready to go in. Um, unfortunately, uh, I didn't think they were gonna come in until mid-December, so I mounted my Yokohamas on the Inkies and then, of course, literally the day after I did that, they uh, they came in. So I got to go pop the bead on the Yankees and get those in there. But I'm not super worried about it. So let's talk uh, track mode. Uh, everybody is asking if you just hold it, uh, hold down the track mode, you go to the linear tack. Um, I call it the nonlinear linear tack. I think uh, uh, Matt from uh, Smoking Tire was kind of saying the same thing. So if you look uh, here, what's well, actually got so zero to four thousand RPM doesn't take up a whole lot of space and then 4,000 to 7,000 takes up most of the tack. So it's really track oriented um, when you do that. So when I drove it two months ago and it wasn't mine, so even though I had like 13 miles on it, I kind of beat it up a little bit. Uh, I, 
I will say that I didn't notice the torque dip, but then when I was done driving it, I realized that I had it in track mode, so, and I wasn't really paying attention to what the actual numbers on the tachometer were. So I, I, I'm hesitant to say that I didn't feel the torque dip um, because I think I was probably pulling digs from like 3,500 to 4,000 RPM and not realizing it. Um, yeah, uh, so Timur, it's it's actually really easy to read. I know this isn't doing it any justice because it's bad lighting and a, a um, crappy, uh, hold on, that's a little better, let's see. So there's the uh, uh, track tack, here's, I, you know, if this is showing up on Twitch, like it's showing up here uh, on my tablet, it it's not doing it any justice. It, it's actually really smooth. Um, I'm thinking the refresh rate on is at least 60 hertz, maybe 90 or even 120 hertz. It, it's, it's pretty smooth. Um, so I don't think there's going to be any worry about it, like kind of being cheap and uh, having a slow refresh rate where it's going to be uh, hard to see. So somebody else asked... Uh, so if I hold down uh, traction control uh, for five seconds, it does turn it all off like on the old car. Here's the interesting thing though, is it switches to the uh, track tack without saying track mode at the bottom. Um, so that's, and I haven't seen, um, haven't even tried yet. I don't think you're gonna be able to switch it back. So I think if you've got traction control off, you're limited to this one, um, which is kind of interesting. I, I don't know. I don't think that's that big of a deal. You know, if you're really trying to drive hard and need the tachometer, you know, you're probably in these upper rev ranges anyways. If you're just putzing around on the street, having fun with traction control off, um, I don't think you're going to be worried about where your RPMs are at or anything. Uh, uh, let's see, Yosh, uh, you said, how are the black levels of the LCD? Uh, actually really good. Uh, yeah, the video is making it look really bright. They're, they're plenty dark. Um, and even in my brightly lit garage, um, it's, it's, pretty much black on the back of it this this tablet's not doing this thing any favors at all uh but it looks really good actually I'm, I'm especially the center section i'm really impressed with the uh right hand side over here sorry if i can get it looking right right hand side is eh, you know it, it's the old style kind of like 80s led i don't know why they didn't just put in a uh, tab all the way across Oop, i'm pressing the left side when it needs to be this side this side left side looks pretty darn good uh i haven't messed around let's see so Oh, here's my Mac. You can tell I'm baby in it because that's my maximum G so far. The right was definitely pulling into uh, Dutch Brothers Coffee earlier because there's a poor kid there that's got a first gen that's been dying to see this thing when it comes. Um, let's see what else is in here. Oh, here's my uh, my torque dip in the middle. Understated. Uh, lap timer. Cool. Uh, there's... Uh, so this is nice. I do like that uh, it's got audio. Man, just stay focused, stupid tablet. Uh, it will show audio from Android Auto. And um, Timur, yeah, I think you can see the G meter when moving. Um, so it'll show you your audio here on the left from Android Auto. So if you're playing Pandora or whatever, uh, it'll show that. Let me see. Actually, was there anything else on here? No. Um, Settings-wise, on the limited at least, you can turn on and off uh, blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, and the steering responsive headlights. Blind spot detection worked really well. Uh, for those of you who didn't see it, it's kind of this little nub right there, and it is bright as hell. Um, even driving in daylight, it was super bright, so I was really impressed with that. It's kind of just a nice feature to have. Um, I went with the limited because it's only a 20 pound weight penalty and I'm a big fan of the uh, blind spot detection and steering responsive headlights and everything else that was going to weigh more is probably coming off the car eventually anyway so not a big deal there. Um, I know people were asking about responsiveness of this thing. Actually let me plug in my phone real quick. Hold on let me set the tablet down. Uh, you're going to get boring video for two seconds. We'll put in Android Auto. So I just plugged it in. Let's see. There's connecting Android Auto literally right after plugging it in. Uh, so there we go. Got, uh, well, that's discouraging. So turn, the, turn the volume down and it didn't turn down. <laughs> wow, there we go. All right, gonna have to report this one into Subaru. <laughs> All right. Why is, if I turn it down on the, uh, I wonder, okay, well, we'll pause that for a minute. Okay, cool. You guys got to see live that we got some work to do on the uh, the head units here. Well, let me catch up with questions. Is blind spot detection just LED? 
uh, it is just the LED, I think. Uh, I don't remember hearing any beeps. Um, how's visibility out of the windows? Uh, fine, just really similar to the uh, first gen. I don't know, I feel like if you've got your mirrors adjusted properly, let me see if I can, yeah, I mean, if you get your mirrors adjusted properly, you shouldn't really need to be changing around, but uh, it is pretty good. Um, capacitive, you know, does that mean it's like touch feedback? Uh, no, it, uh, it's pretty responsive though. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I will say, let's see here. Oh yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I turned the music off. Um, there, yeah. Um, cool seats. I know you asked that twice. Sorry, let me get to it. Uh, seats are very similar to the first generation. So if you have a chance to sit in one of those, um, I don't know what you consider fat. I'm tiny. I'm like 150 pounds. I'm five foot nine. So they feel, uh, a little bigger than snug for me. Um, and uh, I don't know, I'd like them a little bit snugger. If you're a big guy, you know, 250 pounds or whatever, they're probably gonna feel pretty darn snug. Uh, let's see, can you, can you turn on the rear view camera without engaging reverse? No, I don't think you can. I'll have to mess with that, but I don't think there's gonna be any way to do that. Um, does it bump you back into lane two? No, uh, Yosh, on the manual transmission, it's not gonna bump you back into the lane. Uh, Subaru's eyesight system will only come on the automatics. I, I seem to remember seeing that uh, the you kind of get eyesight light on the automatic. So I got I gotta brush up on my product knowledge on that one and uh, try and remember because I don't even think you get dynamic cruise control on the automatics uh, with eyesight. But I'll, let, let me get back to you. I'll make a forum post on that one when I can get an official answer. Um, but yeah, uh, the blind spot detection on, on the manuals, there, there's no eyesight. It's not going to have any kind of like lane keep assist or whatever. Uh, let's see what else we got. Let's see. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's play around. Did it give me a... Uh... I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Oh my god, no, hold on. Darn it. No, don't! Uh, shoot, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play something and then turn it off. I can't, man, that's kind of crappy. Uh, the volume's not working, so I don't know. We'll figure that one out. I know uh, I know the guy to send that to, so hopefully we'll get that one figured out real quick. Um, is there still a pocket on the back of the passenger seat? Uh, no, actually, there's no pocket on the back of the passenger seat. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's one on the back of the driver's seat either. Um, am I just crazy not feeling that? Yeah, there's no pocket back there. So, uh, let's see, yeah, deal breaker, no pocket back there. Um, heated seats and everything are down here just like the first gen. I noticed, so, um, sorry, trying to pull it around. You got your little closey thing here. It, shuts tight even with a cable on there so like if you want to have your phone laying around you can do that um pops back open i didn't notice it hitting anything somebody asked earlier if my knee was hitting uh the start stop button i'm short so my knee doesn't get up that high no pads right here that's hard plastic uh no padding over here that's hard plastic so that's kind of a bummer even on the limited model um Trying to think, what else uh, did I see on Facebook that I got? Oh yeah, everybody's gonna complain about this thing, the uh, uh, turn signal stock. It's BMW style, I don't know, it's different. It's not Subaru, so it's messing with me a little bit. Doesn't mean it's bad by any means, it's just different, right? So um, I guess we'll, uh, we'll we'll see You know how people react to it long term. There's nothing wrong with it. You just kinda, you know, you turn it on and then to kill it, you just click it down. Oh, hold on, am I wrong? Oh yeah, it's a half click down. I don't know, it's gonna take some getting used to. Yeah, there you go. I was right on time for you. Yeah, yeah, so some people are gonna like the BMW stock, some people aren't. Uh, it's a half click up to cancel it. All right, I got it. So half click up is lane change, just three clicks, full click up, keeps it on, and then a half click down cancels it. So there you go, BMW stocks. Uh, other thing that I didn't like, oh, I'm gonna shut this thing off since we've been in here for a few. Um, Put my phone back in my pocket in case my wife calls and gets mad. I'm still not entirely positive that these lights are going to allow the garage door openers to work. I just put in these fancy new LED lights. Um, other thing that I, I was kind of annoyed about on this is that there's no memory uh, of the seat recline when you pull it forward there. Um, so if you pull it forward, it's going to latch back up to straight, which is a pain in the ass. Let's see. Somebody else on Facebook asked uh if it locks over here when you pull it forward so let's see sorry 
yep, still doesn't lock in when you pull it like that. So there's that. So yeah, still uh, same kind of seating situation as the first gen. Let me recline this thing. Where it is, uh, oh here, you can actually see it's lit up. So TPMS reset down there. So it's actually got a light. That's gonna be where you put in your second set of sensors, which is very, very welcome. Um, I don't know, what else do we wanna talk about? Uh, stereo, people ask about the stereo, right? Uh, oh, 12 volt socket in the glove box. Ooh, good question, let's find out. I doubt it, because I think that's where that button was, right? Um, I don't feel one, but I don't have a light on it. It was on the left side, wasn't it, on the first gen? Yeah, I think that's where that was on the first one. Hold on, let me pull up my phone real quick and turn on the LED. One second here. Uh, not seeing anything, kids. Doesn't look like there's any hint of... Oh, no, there is! Look at it back there. Hold on. I don't... Oh, I want to get this thing adjusted so you can see it. There she blows. 12 volt back there. Am I right? Yep, cool. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So it does have 12 volt in the glove box still, so that's kind of cool. Um, stereo system. People wanted to know uh, how the stereo sounds. It's okay. Um, I don't know. It's not great. Uh, it's it's not as good as the Harman Kardon system in my Outback. It's better than the base system uh, with the kicker speaker upgrade that was in my STI. Probably closer to the STI than the Harman Kardon system. So um, nothing that you're going to want to write home about, um, but not bad. Let's see. Head unit aftermarket one, does that OEM head, you know, have any car controls on it? Um, does it? No, I don't think, oh, actually, yeah, it probably does. Let's, hold on, we'll get back in and try it out. Let's see. I'm just gonna start it up again. Yeah, let's see, I'll shut the door again so we can actually hear. Uh, let's play with it. So, settings. Hey, volume work this time. We got that going for us. Um, driver profiles, uh, Wi-Fi, cool. Built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. This, I don't think it actually has Wi-Fi if I remember correctly. Um, so we'll have to check that. Meter screen, gear shift. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, here we go. Meter rev, indicator, RPM. Let's just go ahead and set that real quick while we're in here. 4,000 RPM. Yep, we'll do the obnoxious buzzer with it. Uh, sort of screen. Uh, what else do we have? Home screen shortcuts. Yeah, just like any Subaru you can put in your birthday. Um, your anniversary. I never forget my anniversary because it's May 4th. May the 4th be with you. So every time somebody makes that stupid joke, I go, oh, shit, I need to buy flowers. Uh, sound. Again, it's pretty good. Um, you get your typical EQ uh, balance and voice control. I like this that it's got um, voice control separate from um, balance and EQ, dynamic beat enhancer. I don't know what that is. Boots and cats and boots and cats. What did we ask? What was in uh, camera? Let's find out. Rear camera delay control, uh, steering angle lines. Um, I don't know what delay control is. I think that, oh, I bet that it, it stayed on for a little bit after I clicked it out of, um, reverse. So let's see, hold on. I'll put it into reverse. There's that. Let's see. Take it out of reverse. There goes that. Let's see what happens when we turn on delay control. There's that. Well, cool. I have no idea. We'll have to uh, RTFM, uh, read the effing manual, and we'll find out. So I'm going to turn it back to whatever it was, and we'll figure that out later, and I'll get back with you guys on it. Uh, phone, typical stuff there, I think. Car, let's see what we got. Uh, keyless entry system. Uh, 
Yes, Trez, yeah, the, the lines do move as you, you change the steering, so that's on there. That was one of those settings on there. Uh, so, yeah, there are some uh, settings in the car that you're going to get, uh, that you're going to lose. Let's see, blind spot detection. There's your uh, warning volume, I think. Oh, there you go. So uh, somebody was asking if it beeps at you. I think it probably does. If you, oh, no, that's, so blind spot detection, it's not going to beep at you. Um it's uh that's for rear cross traffic alert so if you're backing out it's gonna yell at you if there's somebody coming along um let's see one touch lane changer that's on that's fun welcome lighting auto light sensor uh light sensitivity is let's see okay we'll have to mess with that because i let's see keyless entry and that's it so that's pretty much the uh the menus there let's go back to home uh, you can set your maintenance reminders just like any other Subaru. Uh, overall, I mean, this thing seems nice and reactive now that I've got uh, volume down and we can go. Uh, let's see, we're on Pop Rocks. All right, uh, with my Sirius XM demo. So, yeah, overall, I don't know. I mean, it seems super responsive going to maintenance. Um, I will say outside of the uh, the live broadcast of the volume not working, that was hilarious. Uh this the touch feedback on this is faster than my uh 10 inch in the um the outback that i've got so let's see my subaru oh so in my subaru you have to have uh hold on I, let me plug my phone back in give me a second here you have to have uh the my subaru app on in on your phone um so we'll let this go and we'll go back to home oh let's see well, I thought I had it on there. No, no, we'll have to mess with it. So what's typically in it is um, like scheduling maintenance and whatnot. Um, so you can do a couple different things in there. Super Starlink. Um, sure, maybe that'll work. No, I don't know. We'll mess with this later and see what we can find. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? No, so my Subaru, I bet, I wonder if there's settings in here. Oh, no, you know what it's going to be? Um, I haven't logged this system or this car into um, my Subaru account yet, and it does have telematics. Uh, so uh, here it's got um, your SOS button and your concierge button for stuff. Uh, so I'm assuming I just have to register the car with my Subaru, and it will get everything on there. So I will uh, get that taken care of over the next couple of days, and I'll post back, and hopefully we can get some more information for you on that one um let's see can you rearrange the apps uh i don't think so um there's home screen shortcuts that i think you can do let's see i don't know it's yeah no i can't rearrange the apps on it so uh interior light switch um they are push buttons and silly bright with the leds on and then the other one is this guy right here i don't know it feels like any card oops this is off so um yeah i don't know i don't think it feels cheap or anything like that um so yeah pretty good let's turn this thing off and open up a hood for you guys uh so you can see that give me a second here crawling back out of this Set this down here for two seconds while I open it up. Oh, that's going to fall off. Buckets. One second, guys. I know that's got a two by four in the way or whatever. All right. So here's a uh, focus. Damn it. Old tablet does not want to focus at all. And I can't get it to. If I raise my hand in front of you, will you focus? There we go, oh, maybe. There we go. Did he turn on and off headlights? High beams, uh, same as it used to be. Um, so just uh, high beams are going to be clicking the stock forward, and then it's got a little uh, rotator knob on the outside. So people were asking, let's see, um, does have the uh, oil cooler off of basically like the WRX and whatnot down here? Here's one thing I noticed uh, that jumped out to me right away. This little guy, uh, this stupid 
AC pipe right here. Um, I do have motion control coilovers ready to go on with the remote reservoirs and you typically mount them right about there. So that's a pain in the ass. Hopefully that's not gonna be too much in the way. I don't think it is. Um, we'll see. This hose also comes kind of close over here, um, but we'll see. How about as a turn signal? Uh, nah, fuzzy, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's, it's one of those things where like, if you're not used to it, you're gonna be annoyed by it until you get used to it. I think the problem for me is, uh, I don't know, if Subaru's going that way with all their vehicles, then it's not gonna bother me like when it's that way, but going back and forth in between my Outback and this, it's probably gonna like, I don't know, I'm not gonna have any muscle memory for it, so that's gonna suck, but I don't know. It's, there's more important things in life than getting annoyed about like how your turn signal works, right? And so, not a big deal there. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I've got a, a small concern about is, um, this pipe right here. So I'm hoping I got to measure the cans, but hoping the can uh, for the remote reservoir can go right here um, and maybe sit on top without touching the hood. So we're gonna have to mess with that. Uh, cool into the oil cooler sandwich. Um, yeah, hold on, let me go grab my light real quick. Um, give me a second guys, I'm gonna run in and, oh, you know what, I'll just use my phone light. So let's oh, hold on. Uh, I don't know. That's I can't really see a whole lot down there. Oh, it kind of comes in down. Hold on. Well, I'm trying to hold the camera and do two things at once. Uh, comes in on the back side over here. So I don't. I'll have to mess around to see where it goes. Oh, the one is that is the one that actually comes out in front of it here. Um, back side is going to be rooted back there. So. I'm assuming that's probably pretty similar to WRX and whatnot, but we'll have to um, have to mess around with it and figure it out. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to install an oil cooler. That's down the line. So uh, I think I told you guys um, I was in Ohio last weekend for uh, my brother's wedding. I actually grew up in Cincinnati, and uh, so I'm pretty good friends with a lot of the guys at Forge Line Wheels who happen to be right next door to... Harrop. Uh, so stopped in to say hi to Harrop and Forge Line while I was back in Ohio. And we're kind of working on figuring out what we need to do to get a supercharger on this thing. So uh, right now, oil cooler, long-term answer is yes. Short-term answer is got to see what fits after everything else goes on. Um, you know, I it's it's definitely something that we'll I'll, I'll want to do, um, but we just got to figure out what all fits. Um, somebody else was asking the air box. Um, I think the air box is a little bit different because if I remember, it used to be more of a right angle uh, there. Um, you've got this big expansion thing right here. Um, so now it's more of like a 45 degree angle coming into the, uh, the inlet tube. Uh, Comet, trunk any different? Let's see. I, I don't think so. Um, let's find out. I know you don't get a spare in it. Sorry, and there's not going to be a whole lot of light back here. So um, super dark right now. No spare, you just get your little pump. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see, yeah, you're not able to see it all. There is an amp for the uh, audio in there. Um, we'll have to see if that comes on the premium. I don't think it does based on what we saw online and whatnot. So, um, yeah, the new air box, I feel like it's friendlier to the, the oil lines too. So we'll have to see um, long term. I know that, so I started pulling parts uh, cross-references on this motor compared to the Ascent and pretty much everything's different. So uh, we can't just uh, use the Ascent motor that Harrop had to uh, figure everything out on that. So we're gonna have to kind of go back to the drawing board. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll go from there. So I don't know, I'm either gonna ship the car to them this winter and let them build it there, or they're possibly gonna fly somebody out here and um, scan the thing. So battery, same size. Yeah, uh, same size, uh, looks like 470 cold cranking amps on it. So I don't remember how big the um, cold cranking amp size was on the first one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, 470. So, and size wise, physical size wise, looks about the same. Um, what else you guys got? My, uh, my nurse wife is coming home probably in the next... 10, 15 minutes. I don't want to get this thing shut down before she comes home so she doesn't murder me for being a nerd. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> forced induction immediately. Yeah, the plan was always, I don't know, I usually lightly modify my cars for autocross and whatnot and make sure that I can get most of my money back out of it so I'm not, you know, wasting money on it. 
Uh, this one, I kind of told my wife, like, I'm going to keep this car for a long time, so I'm going to go kind of crazy on it. So the idea is Harrop Supercharger, um, a built block maybe eventually if I need to, but I'm going to see if I can get it to like 350 or 400 at the wheels. Um, and then do some Zebulon arrow on the back and front of it. Eventually, we'll go ahead and carve up these bad man pajamas and uh, see if we can fit some like 305s or 315s under there. Um, but uh, for right now, we're going to have to settle for the 255 yokes. So you got ARP studs getting ready to go on it too so we can play around with spacing. And underneath that, we got some bronze RPF1s. Um, Oil level indicator. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that right now just because I'm going to have to put the, uh, the tablet down. But um, I think it's typical super dipstick. I would have seen that's probably the same. So um, yeah, ceramic coating. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, and so I need to – I told the dealership not to really mess around with, uh, with washing this thing for me because I'm kind of anal about things. I don't know if you guys saw uh, – or have you heard elsewhere? It did so e either the dealership or the port? There's no way you're gonna be able to see this now. Yeah, are you? Hold on. Oh yeah, you actually can see it. So it's actually got a scratch on it. I don't know if it was the store or the port. I'm gonna assume it was the uh, the port that scratched it. But I was a little bummed to see that. We'll get it fixed. Not a big deal. Life goes on. Um, and then you can still see this is normal on a car. Um, I don't know. If, there's no way you're gonna be able to see this one. But you can see kind of the lines from where they pulled the plastic off on it. Uh, let me see if I can get an angle where you can actually see it. No, there's a there's a line like coming through here from where they pulled some of the plastic wrap off. Yes, uh, RPF ones are 17 by nines. I got the plus 45s on purpose so I could throw some spacers on and start measuring out to see what uh, what's going to fit. So I've seen a couple guys from Japan still have the 18 by 9.5s plus 40s on there. So I'm thinking that um, the plus 35 Ankies are going to fit no problem. So we'll throw. Um, 10 millimeters of spacers or washers or something on in lower town just to make sure that it's, up. excuse me, okay, but I think the plus 35s are going to be okay. I think wheel fitment's going to be very similar. Um, looks like we've got quite a bit of room back here in the back. So, uh, yeah, I mean, these are just the um, seven and a half inch wide. we got plenty of room, so I am super, super looking forward to lowering this thing this weekend because it is going to look so, so damn good. So also, if you guys saw, I'm a super huge nerd, super fan, so I'm putting the rally livery on this thing. Uh, originally, this car was supposed to show up tomorrow, um, which was a week late, basically, and I had a vinyl appointment scheduled tomorrow to get that done, and I canceled that yesterday, and then as soon as I canceled it, I found out the paperwork was coming in time that I could pick it up today, so... Uh, I didn't hear back from my vinyl guy. I think I'm going to have to wait till mid-November now to get that put on, but we'll get it done. It's kind of a bummer because the rally team's uh, in town next week for Oregon Trail Rally, and I know Travis and Ken are going to be in town um, just through my job. I've had the opportunity to meet those guys before. They're super cool, and I was going to see if I can get Travis to uh, sign the glove box and maybe do some donuts in this thing, so maybe we'll have some hilarious video to post later, but we'll see. Uh, I don't know if the rally team will frown on that or if the store will frown on it, but we'll at least ask, right? So burn up those yokes and have some fun on it. That's a good way to break the car in. So trying to think of what else. Oh, somebody asked um, pedal dance. Pedal dance, I can't get it to work on it. Uh, I've never been a big pedal dancer before. I don't think you need to, but I tried uh, and I could not get it to go. Um, I've done it in the past. So I feel like I know what I'm doing and it didn't seem to work on this one. Um, yeah, GR livery, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, hit cones. I know that's going to scratch up my my yellow on it, but yeah, dude, this blue, I don't know. Like, so I feel like this World Rally blue is a touch darker or deeper than what was on my 13 that I had in the past. So I can't wait to get it cleaned up and run just like a really light polish over it and then hit it with, I, I use um, the Wolfgang sealant, uh, which tends to look really good. I don't do the ceramic stuff because that's too big of a pain in the ass for like when you're uh, doing cone scuffs and all that crap. Um, so I'm just going to do that Wolfgang sealant because a couple coats of that will last you six months to a year and still have that water beat up really nice. So I'll uh, I'll take my good camera and actually post some good pictures of it once I get it cleaned up and, and get it sealed up and I uh, get it lowered on the wheels and whatnot. So, but uh, we're about five minutes till my wife comes home, I think. Let's see. Aftermarket parts, uh, tree. So uh, first gen suspension fits it at least uh, like coilovers. Uh, I think front bar is going to fit it. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers the front bar fits it because I've got a 
Carcepts bar, my messy ass toolbox over here, ready to go on. Um, exhaust, I, maybe a cap back. The hangers, if they're in the same place, are gonna work, but the connection between the mid pipe and the axle back is different on this. So like a cap back's not gonna work. Uh, Comet, quieter cabin. No, I think it's honestly, it's maybe a little bit louder with the Michelins. Um, we'll see. I, it's been so long since I've driven a stock first gen. It's hard for me to compare, but I wouldn't say that it's like quiet by any means. Um, no, the protrusions on the rockers and the ah, screw it, man. It's a, it's a car. It's going to get beat up. It's going to be my track car, an autocross car. So I plan on time trialing it, whatever. You know, I, if, if I can get a, a wide ass splitter on the front from uh, Zebulon, maybe if I'm under steering into stuff, it'll knock it away from the rockers. We'll see. So, no, uh, no squeaks. Actually, I'm pleasantly surprised because even my STI had some squeaks and rattles in it. This thing seems really, really well built. Um, literally the only thing that I found wrong with it so far is when I plugged in Android Auto earlier and it wouldn't turn the volume down. So we'll, uh, we'll see. I'll keep you updated on it. Uh, it is a new car. You know, it's got to be one of the first ones off the line. Um, the, the VIN on it is number 27. So um, it's, it's early, early production on this thing. It was built back on um, September 2nd, which was only a few days before the plant got shut down over there. So I don't know if they were ready to go on break or, or not just because of the, the part shortage. Um, but it is one of the first production uh, ones built that I could see. So pleasantly surprised of how solid the interior feels on it at this point. But, you know, once I start to throw it around a little bit more and play with it, we'll, uh, we'll see if anything changes. So, but uh, I think that's going to be it tonight, guys. I, I might go live again this weekend to just put this thing up in the uh, corner uh, when I'm throwing coilovers on, but you'll get pictures of it and stuff and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Post questions on the forum. We'll, uh, I'll answer them for you. See ya.